In this video we're going to talk about compression techniques, specifically the two types of compression techniques which is lossy compression and lossless compression. Lossy compression is compression where you lose some of the original data in the file. So JPEG is an example of lossy compression. The way that JPEG work, it actually averages out colors within it. So if you have a look at this image here, what you'll find is if you just focus in on this area here, there's really some nice patterns happening in the video, in the picture. Whereas if you have a look here, what's happened is the, the colors in the pixels, there's really only two colors there. It's a dark gray and a light gray. So what happens is it actually averages out those colors so you get a little bit of a loss in quality. But the most important thing obviously is that you lose a lot of file size when you go from a raw file to JPEG. But that data can't be put back in once it's taken out. So what happens with lossy compression is sometimes you get something called compression artifacts. Particularly if you save a file as a JPEG and then in Photoshop for example you can save the level of compression and the higher level of quality means that the more compressed it is and the lower level of quality means the more compressed it is. So what happens is that after you've saved something as a JPEG, say at low quality, if you save it again at low quality, it compresses it again. So what can happen is after a number of rotations of compression that you can actually get what we call artifacts, which is where you can actually start to see individual pixels within the files or missing pixels or things like that. The key here to understanding loss, lossy compression is that those artifacts exist because the data isn't retained and you once you throw that data away you don't get it back. This image from Information Sector where technology a project based approach from Pearson Longman is a really good representation of lossless compression. Basically with lossless compression what happens is the data is compressed but the original data is stored. So if we have a look here at the pixels, what we have along here is that we have, uh, we've got, say, for example, eight lots of red pixels here. Now, rather than saving pixel 1, pixel 2, pixel 3, pixel 4, pixel 5, pixel 6, pixel 7, pixel 8, um, what it does instead is it compress that by saying, when you uncompress, show eight lots of the red pixel. Okay? Here, it's quicker to say, uh, one pixel of green okay and the pixel here uh, the green pixel here is just one pixel of green same thing here 32 okay that's one pixel of that color purple one pixel of this color purple one pixel of this color purple in this case then there's six pixels of that blue again it's quicker to say one pixel of 96 and one pixel of 96 than to say two pixels of 96 because you're still representing that in two pieces of data. So there's no point in taking the extra time to uncompress that because it's already compressed as far as it can be. Here we've got five pixels of that colored orange, the 37 orange, and then five pixels of that red again, and then two pixels of the pink. And again, we don't represent this as two lots of that pink because that's the same amount of data as two lots of the pink. Okay. The best part of um, lossy, lossless compression is that all of that data is retained. So what happens is when you uncompress it, then you end up with this, a picture-perfect image. Obviously, the more colours that you have, then the harder this compression works, which is why it works so well with PNG, which really only support 256 or 8-bit colour. So just to repeat... A lossless, so just to repeat on that, lossless data is data where it's compressed, but then when you uncompress it, then uh, it comes back to its regular form. Another example of this outside of the multimedia industry would be using something like a zip file where you would come back and have the same, um, the same file structure again. Zip's not really a great example though because it's not really a multimedia file. It's sort of more just like a generic file compression. 
when we talk about compression in multimedia, we're really talking about the type of compression that comes from file types and codecs.